But enough of that technical talk. How does this bike ride on a modern mountain bike trail? Mm -hmm. ah! All right, welcome back party people. Today, we're gonna get nostalgic. So, what were you doing in 1994? That was kind of a special year for me. I was graduating college and I was about to go earn my keep. And I remember a few things from that year because there were kind of events that kind of stuck in my head. Like, for example, there was no World Series that year. Major League Baseball was on a strike. I remember the World Cup being played in the United States and I believe Brazil defeated Italy for the title and out in the movie theaters, probably two of my favorite movies, Forrest Gump and Shawshank Redemption, were released. But what was the state of mountain biking in 1994? I had no idea. The closest I got to mountain biking was a department store mountain bike that I would trolley around the university campus on. Never even got close to a trail. But today is a little bit different. Today I'm fortunate enough to have a 1994 Trek Mountain Track 820. This was an entry level mountain bike from Trek back in 1994. Today we're going to compare it to a modern 2020 Trek entry level mountain bike and then we're going to take them out on the trails and see how they ride. Now if you're looking for an in-depth technical review of this bike you're in the wrong place because what I'm more curious about is how this bike actually rides. Will it ride well in a modern mountain bike trail? Now you can still find the original marketing material and technical manuals for all of the vintage Trek mountain bikes. Just go to vintage-trek.com. I did look up the original marketing material for this bike and it's interesting even back in 1994 for the entry level mountain bikes Trek's largest competitor were department store bikes and they really made a cut at department store bikes in their marketing material. It says that this particular bike fit is for somebody that's a recreational rider, not a racer, but that doesn't mean they have to settle for something wimpy. It's right there in their literature. So it's interesting to see that really nothing has changed from 1994 to 2020. All of these entry level bikes are still competing with department store bikes. All right, so let's compare this 1994 entry level mountain bike with this 2020 entry-level mountain bike both from the same manufacturer they're not exactly equivalent entry-level bikes but I think this will kind of help us understand how mountain biking has progressed all right so let's start with the front wheel here we have a 26 inch wheel 26 inch tire 1.95 inches wide and on our modern bike here with much wider tires now these are a 2.20 wide 27.5 inch wheel both have the quick release mechanism for the front wheel. We have cantilever brakes. They're not V brakes, they're cantilever brakes. Whereas your modern day Trek mountain bike entry level comes with a hydraulic disc brake with 160 millimeter rotor on the front. This particular bike has a rigid fork. And if we look at our modern mountain bikes now, we have our entry level mountain bikes that are outfitted with a spring fork. So this is not an air fork. It is a spring fork and depending on what size frame you get you may get 100 millimeters of travel you may get 110 millimeters of travel this fork even comes with preload and also a lockout on the top as well big difference in 1994 and 2020 as far as the fork so on our classic trek here we have a threaded headset on our modern mountain bike we have this straight steer tube and we have this top nut that creates compression so notice the handlebar width on our classic trek here and then take a look at the handlebar width on our modern trek entry level bike much wider even on the smaller this is a small frame and this is a medium frame so the handlebar width has changed dramatically the other thing that's changed a lot too is the shifter mechanism uh, grip shifts were common on bikes back in the day now we have these lever shifters which i think are much better option so this particular bike is a 21 speed so three chain rings on the front a seven speed cassette on the rear it has a three speed grip shifter on the left side of the handlebars and a seven speed shifter on the right side of the handlebars on our modern mountain bike we have a two by system so we have two chain rings on the front and we have an eight speed cassette on the rear and the gearing is a little bit lower than it is in our classic mountain bike there 
So this is a steel chromoly frame. Just take a look at the size of the actual frame tubing here. Very small as compared to our aluminum bike, which has a much larger diameter. They both have these kind of quick release seat mechanisms. The diameters of the seat tubes obviously have changed a little bit bigger there on our modern mountain bike. So this is a Shimano derailleur and that is a Shimano derailleur too. The one thing that you'll notice right away is the use of plastics. Uh, much less plastic in this classic bike. A lot more plastic in the newer bikes. Cantilever brakes again for the rear. And on our modern bike, we have rear 160 millimeter rotors and uh, hydraulic disc brakes, which are pretty standard on entry level bikes. One of the other interesting things about this bike is the cable routing. There's a lot of outer tube and under tube routing. And even on the top tube here, there's routing on top of the top tube. And it's interesting, there is a lot of bare cable here, whereas in most modern entry level bikes, the cable sheathing or housing here would extend all the way through. So back in 1994, in the marketing literature, Trek said this bike weighs 28.1 pounds. So we're going to put it on the scale here and see if that's true. Uh, mind you, we do have some specific add-ons here. I think the bar ends were added, the gel seat cover was added, and I'm not sure if they measured the weight with the pedals on or off, but we're going to see how much this bike weighs, and then we'll compare it to a modern entry-level mountain bike. The frame sizes are not exactly congruent. This is a small frame. This is an 18 inch frame. So we have it on the scale and we have 31 pounds and 12 ounces, 14.37 kilograms. All right, so now we have our modern entry-level mountain bike on the scale and we have 31.14 ounces, 14.3 three one kilogram the actual modern small frame mountain bike is heavier by just a, a couple of ounces also included in the marketing material for this bike back in 1994 was the frame geometry charts and for 820 with an 18 inch frame we can see that the head tube angle is 70.5 degrees and the seat tube angle is 72.5 degrees so that's a, a definite change from modern geometry where we have a slacker head tube angle and you know at one point the seat tube angles were getting really slack but now they've steepened up a bit so this will be a really interesting bike to see how it pedals on the trail but enough of that technical talk how does this bike ride on a modern mountain bike trail one eternity later number one she'll be number two i'll be number three out here with the with the h money and the g money, no h -money. oh man that's gonna be zero sitting down on this ride oh on this 2020 trek. I'm back here on a 1994 trek. <laughs> this was what trek deemed as a. Oh, I like the trail already. <laughs> recreational trail, light trail use bike. And it was new. And I tell you, this uh. <laughs> <laughs> Your hub engagement is not exactly great, I'll tell you that right now. I still can't remember which way to shift these gears. So, these groups like this, I'm just gonna try to hop on over. Give it the beans, girls. Give it the beans. I feel like I'm, you know, it's not a half bad riding bike, to be honest with you. You gotta use your arms and your legs as shock absorbers. It does need a new set of pedals on it. Take the bar ends off of it. Put a little bit wider handlebars on this thing, I could bomb it. And this is a true test of the brake torque, which they do, but they don't bite like modern disc brakes for sure. But hopefully good enough. Yeah. You don't want to sit on the seat too much because you got no shock over it. And uh, I just ran into a 2020 trek and we're still in pieces so that's a good sign. Oh my god. We're up in the Lure River Regional Park today. It's very tight and rooty. Perfect for this bike. Not. Well, I changed gears by accident. Ah, wrong way. Ah, okay, I think two to me. Gear down. Look, up is, you're up. The problem with grip shifters are, 
if you got a grip, you're gonna turn them by accident. I see that as a, a negative. Brakes are really hard to grab. I'm spinning wheels on this pine straw. I feel like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is chopped off and put my pinkies right now. Why well, now? Nah. Like now. We have our first washout. Oh. Our camera. I don't know, but I think we probably should have rode this trail the other way. You know, the interesting thing about this, uh, this steel from Molly frame, kind of shock dampening natural attribute to it that I don't think you feel like an aluminum bike. Might even get some air. said this bike was 300 either 50 or 335 US dollars when it was new. The one thing that I miss the most right now is my dropper post. This is kind of unbelievable right on a bike like this even before the front suspension. <laughs> oh my god. Just like any hardtail. When you have a fully rigid bike, line is super important. It's over. Hey! Hey! <laughs> You're liking them roots today, Jim Money. <laughs> because of the, uh, the steep seat tube angle, you're kind of almost straight over the pedals because you really have to drop your heels. Well, should, we, should we hug you again? You, you need to push. Definitely put more power down than I would have to on my bike. Usually I'd be coasting through a lot of this and pumping it. And uh, I don't know why it's easy to pump on this. The brakes do work. I tune this bike up. Up there. You're getting bounce all over. I like pumping on the bike. Did we even see a river? Huh? Did we even see a river? Uh, kind of. We saw a ditch. Close enough. Red. <laughs> <laughs> Go, oh, Pam. Pam. 
Aia! Ah, yeah. <laughs> 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 little bitch! Popcorn machine back here. I'm getting popped. Ay. Girl power. Trick power. I'm not sure if I caught that or not. It's anyway. I'm okay. Man, I heard a butt hit. Yeah. What the hell? I think the front wheel washed out, huh? Something like that, because mm -hmm. I was sick. <laughs> Them up today. <laughs> Got a lot of folly here. <laughs> in a one hand and the left go and then just a human ah did you hit the tree yeah. oh with the hand That thing right there called roof. Tell me what. <laughs> that was good. Oh. Ow. Ow. I saw the leg. Okay, Troy. Okay, Troy. Burn rubber. There's a deer coming, get us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Should be like. Got a lot here where the snakes are. Wait! <coughs> That'll get them moving. Cutting it close. I know.
All right, we're back home now just doing a little stretching. So that'll do it for this video. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Till next time, you know what to do. Skill up and ride, bend up and go, and just have fun.